never giving up up for you never giving up never giving up never giving up never giving up up for you all right folks we are back that's right we are here at no sign back blah we are at no sound bites allowed the podcast and video cast uh talking about the issues that matter to you and me and everyone i am your host michael voss the dragon of the southern tier and we are on the exceptional conservative network and i am happy to be here with you god i i enjoy this every every week when i get to spend saturdays i get some extra time we get to have two hours talking with you about all the different things that happen throughout the week all the issues that are affecting you near and far and 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 hearing back from all of you like in our chat room right now uh, we have john who's listening to us and sending us messages on facebook we have people who are reaching us on twitter and uh, at the mv consult and of course we have our chat room and tina's in there right now amongst others and we're always happy to hear from all of you and getting your feedback and please if you want to call in you can reach us at 607 242 nine two four seven go ahead and send us a call and we'll try and get you onto the program as well to hear your thoughts now we've covered a lot of ground here today and i do want to mention if you are enjoying the show please first of all drop by our friends over at the belmar pub and at the park diner enjoy their food enjoy the uh, drinks and the great atmosphere that's not a paid advertisement they're my friends i enjoy them and i'm always thankful for being around with them, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it just as much as I do. I would also suggest, if you can, please donate. Uh, you know, we'd love to take your emails and listen to them as well. But at the moment, our email is down, and that's because you know it costs money to do all of this to keep the lights on, to keep the program going, going to events, getting uh, different people in for interviews. It all costs money, and your help keeps it all going. So please, if you can, just like John Solak, um, Robert Murphy, uh, Jared, and Ed Hickey, it doesn't matter how much. It could be five dollars. It could be, you know, you could be like Bob Murphy and fifty dollars. It doesn't matter. Everything helps. Anything you can do to help always is a big bonus for us. So we thank all of our supporters for that. Even if it's just because you put a like or a share, all of it matters. So going forward. At the end of the uh, at the end of the hour at noon, we were talking about Fran Lebowitz, and as I had mentioned then, and I will say it again, shame on Fran Lebowitz. I mean, Game of Thrones throwing the fruit and baskets at her as she runs through the crowds. Shame on you, Fran Lebowitz, for suggesting that anyone should kill a sitting president. If anyone had ever dared say that about President Obama, President Bill Clinton, they would have been excoriated. They would have been ripped apart by the news media. But somehow, Fran Lebowitz is now justified in calling for the death of a president because her personal feelings are more important than you, more important than your opinion, more important than our government. That should terrify people. That there are some people there, and these are elitists who are out there who are saying that their opinion, because they don't like that they lost the 2016 election. We're almost at the 2020 election. And because they lost the 2016 election, well, then everyone else is wrong. 61 million people in America are wrong. That their opinion doesn't matter. That their votes don't matter. Because Fran Lebowitz doesn't like it. And because she doesn't like it, she thinks, well, the answer to correct it is to kill the president. And if you think that I am taking this out of context, that I have somehow misunderstood this, that this is not correct, that that isn't what she said, let's go to her words directly. This is from Real Clear Politics. This was published on May 17th. This is from Bill Maher's Real Time with Bill Maher HBO show. This is from Friday the 17th. And this is Fran Lebowitz, her words exactly in context. I'm going to play that for you right now. 
I mean, certainly he deserves to be impeached. I mean, deserves. That, I know we all think that but. impeachment would be just the beginning of what he deserves. Um, so, you know, not even scratching the surface of what he deserves. You know, but it's a practical matter. It's I mean, a practical matter. Whenever you know, I think about this and what he really deserves. I think we should turn him over to the Saudis. You know, his buddies, the same Saudis. You know, who got rid of that reporter. You know, maybe they could do the same for him. Um, <coughs> you know, I. Okay, that's all this. And the article goes on. Now, I just wanted you to hear, that wasn't, there was no mistake there. There was no misstep. She was feeding off of the crowd. She was listening to the group as they were telling her, oh, oh, you know, isn't it great? Yeah, we, we should impeach the president. It's not enough to impeach the president. Mind you, he hasn't committed a crime. He hasn't committed a crime. She doesn't like what he has done which means that she doesn't like the fact that the unemployment rate is at 3.6 or 3.9%. She doesn't like the fact that the lowest uh, recorded uh, unemployment rate for blacks, for Hispanics, women are at all-time lows. That's not good enough for her. Okay, she doesn't like that. She doesn't like that we have, that we're engaging with North Korea and getting more done with North Korea towards nuclear disarmament than we've ever seen in the history, in the 50, oh, actually 60 years that we've had a, a truce with them because we've had a war that's been on pause throughout the entire time. No, no, that's not good enough for her. We're not, the world being safer, and it is, and the economy for the American people being better, and it is, is not good enough for her. No, no, because it's not democratic socialism and so she decides she suggests that our president should be dismembered how dare she how dare she do that that is insulting Fran Leibowitz shame on you Game of Thrones shame on you how dare you do that that is insulting now am I surprised that this happened am I surprised that this was done on the Bill Maher show Bill Maher, a gentleman, and again, another example of the elitism that we're talking about here, we're talking about Bill Maher. Remember it, Bill Maher, and this is an article uh, that I wrote about this, actually, was on, and it's on the Voss Political Commentary site. You can look it up for yourself. Uh, this was published on October 11th of 2018. Facebook commentary, will interest rates crash the economy like Bill Maher hoped? Remember, it was Bill Maher who said, I believe it was in June, actually it was June 9th of 2018, that he called for the economy to crash. He wanted a recession. He said he hoped there would be a recession to, so that they could get rid of Trump. And he was just so sorry, not really, if it hurts people. So he's willing to hurt people you. He's willing to have America fail. He is willing to have you unemployed and desperate and in need of the government to save you, to feed you, to give you housing. That's what he wants, just so that his political preference on who's in charge of the, uh, of the White House, that's what he's willing to do. He's willing to sacrifice you. He's willing to sacrifice your life and your well-being, and your, your economic and your personal happiness so that he can have his preference in politics. And Fran Leibowitz is willing to go even further. She's willing to kill a president. That's a crime, by the way. That is a crime. And Fran Leibowitz is saying this. How, how, where have we come to in, in American politics that we can say that someone can come out there and say, oh, I would like to see the president dead because I don't like their politics. I mean, it's one thing. I didn't like Obama's politics. I didn't like the politics of Bill Clinton, but I never said that they should be dead. And no one should have. That's not an appropriate answer. You don't agree with them, vote them out of office. Okay, I agree with that. You can criticize them all day long. I'm not saying that Trump is a wonderful person. I'm not saying that he's warm, makes you feel warm and fuzzy. I'm saying he's effective, which is what we hired him for. That's why he was elected, to be effective. 
That is what a president is supposed to be. I don't want to have a beer with Obama any more than I want to have a beer with uh, President Trump. Actually, I probably do want to have a beer with President Trump. But that, that being said, that doesn't matter. Are they effective? Is the economy doing better? Are we, are we seeing continuous, consistent 3% unemployment? Are we seeing an economy that is growing at 3% on GDP? Are we seeing more small businesses created under President Trump's administration? And the answer is yes. Is that attributable to President Trump? Yes. Not just have I said that. That's been in Forbes. That's been in the New York Times. Economists have looked it over. That is a fact. I don't. You may not like that fact. There may be people who are Democrats or otherwise leaning that don't like it. And that's fine. You don't have to like it. But the fact that you don't like it doesn't make it a fact. It doesn't change the reality. Nor does your feelings about this justify saying that someone should dismember the president. How dare she? You know, the limit on the ability of free speech, which I believe in near absolute, say, say anything that you want. But you should never incite violence. That is the limit. You want to be KKK, go for it. You want to be part of the Democratic Party, which I believe today under socialism is more closer to KKK and authoritarian and, 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 and censorship. But you don't get to say, let's kill somebody. Let's go attack somebody. You know, like Maxine Waters. Go after people because you don't agree with their politics and disrupt their lives as they shop, as they eat food, as they're out with their family and their kids. That's wrong. Killing, asking, suggesting that someone should kill our president is wrong. That's it. There is no, there is no middle ground on this. It's very simple. It's wrong. It is absolutely 100% wrong. And anyone who is advocating that has done something wrong and we should call them out for it. And we should tell them that they are wrong. But am I surprised that Bill Maher would have someone like, uh, that he would have Fran Lebowitz on just so that she can mention this? No, I'm not. Not when he's willing to sacrifice your life. Bill Maher makes millions. You don't. Bill Maher is going to live relatively comfortably through a recession. You're not. I'm not. Bill Maher is okay with that. I'm not. And I have to tell you, when, when you think about that, and, and what's their response now? Well, she has since come out and said that uh, she thought that, well, I'm trying to find the quote here. No, here, here's her answer. And I, I want to, again, go to Real Clear Politics, neutral site. They're quoting her. You know, following the broadcast, when all of the producers noticed the backlash that people across the nation were saying, how dare you threaten a president and wish them to die? How wrong are you? Well, what they did, she decided to clarify. She says, this is Ann Leibowitz, quote, I didn't realize that I had said it. I had 12 cups of coffee. I regret saying it. I did not mean that, and I regret saying it. I regretted that everyone misinterpreted it. Women. Let's understand this, okay? So what she's saying is, if if you heard her say that she would like to see the president dismembered, you misunderstood her words, even though that's what she said. So you're not smart enough. Remember, SATs, adversity score. You live in an area with people who are unemployed. You happen to be unemployed. You happen to be a single parent or the child of a single parent, or you live in the wrong neighborhood, or you're not in the right category for the democratic socialists, so you're stupid, so you don't understand. It's your fault. You misunderstood her clear statement to have the president dismembered. You are too dumb. That's what she's saying. And, or, in, in the same sentence, she also says, well, she didn't mean it. How, well, did you not mean it, or did I misunderstand you? Because you can't say the, both things. Either you didn't mean to say what you said and you regret it or you, you 
said it and you don't regret it and I misunderstood what you meant. It, you can't have both. They're, they're opposing thoughts. They're opposing excuses for what you're trying to say. And she goes on to say, well, it's because of 12 cups of coffee. What does that have to do with anything? 12 cups of coffee do not make you inebriated. They don't, that doesn't change your functioning. You, you're not, your brain isn't going to suddenly shut down because you had a cup of coffee. I'm sorry. Coffee is not alcohol. I don't know. Instead of creamer, are you putting in vodka? I mean, what's in your coffee? I don't understand. What are you taking with this coffee that you said? What are you taking with this coffee that you suddenly lose your ability to be cognitive and to have a, a clear thought? Because you are having a conversation and everything else in your conversation seemed to be very clear. But suddenly when you made that one statement, you didn't understand it. And again, I played that for you. I will play it again for you just to make sure that we get this very clear on what she said. And I believe it was right about, I want to make sure I get enough of it because I think it's, it's very clear. I, you know, I don't know. I, I think at this point I do feel that we should. When I say we, of course, it's not us, yeah. it's them. You know, we're always saying we, but it's never we, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, yes, right, I think they doing. should impeach him. We're not in charge, you know. Um, who, I, I do. I think they should start impeachment. Who do you, who do you like? Oh, wait a minute. No, no I didn't go back far enough. Uh, well, okay. Well, I'm not going to. Well, that. And now it's loading up. Okay. Forget it. But my point is, as we heard, as the article quotes, she said it very clearly. Okay. She, you know, uh, and that's why we think about him. We, well, she made it very clear. Impeachment would be just the beginning of what he deserves, not even scratching the surface of what he deserves. And Lee Woods goes on to say, whenever I think about this and what he really deserves, I think we should turn him over to the Saudis, you know, his buddies, the Saudis, who got rid of that reporter, you know, maybe they could do the same for him, get rid of him. And that person was alleged to have been dismembered. How is it unclear on what she is saying. There's nothing to misinterpret that has nothing to do with how much coffee that she had, that has nothing to do with her conversation that is completely coherent and legible. So even if she's having, I don't know, vodka mixed in instead of creamer with her coffee, she's still being legible. We didn't misunderstand her. The coffee didn't deny her the ability to have a conversation. And... She did realize what she said. She was very clear. She was feeding off the crowd, a crowd that when she said that were mixed. They weren't all cheering. They were shocked. They were shocked that someone would dare say to kill a president. And if you had said such a thing about President Obama, there would be a riot in the news, in the media, and they would be demanding, kind of like what happened when Bill Maher made his comments about 9-11, and got him kicked off of his original show, and, that, and that's why he's on HBO right now, because he's outrageously wrong, and there would be an outcry amongst the public, and there should be, and Fran Leibowitz should be penalized. Well, and I, when I say penalized, I think the public should not, you know, she's a writer at Vanity Fair, we should not buy Vanity Fair. We should publicly make statements about it, like I am right now. We should let people know that this is wrong. And I think it's very, very wrong. You may disagree. And, I'm, and that's why I'm here, to hear what you have to say and to have the conversation with you. Because maybe you, and if someone is out there that thinks that Fran Lebowitz somehow was misinterpreted, that I have misunderstood what she meant by having the Saudis take care of the president in the same way that they did a reporter who was allegedly uh, dismembered, please clarify for me what I'm misunderstanding. Maybe it's because I grew up with a single parent. Maybe it's because I grew up in a neighborhood that had unemployment. Maybe it's because I, uh, there were drugs and crime in my neighborhood. Maybe I'm, according to some 
of these democratic socialists, I'm not smart enough to understand this because I do understand English. Com my English comprehension is pretty high, and I'm pretty sure I understand what she said and what are the words when I read them. So please, do explain to me how I got it wrong. Because Fr Fran Leibowitz is desperate to, to make sure we understand that we're at fault, that it's our fault for not understanding her because she's smarter than us. And she believes, and Bill Maher is probably ecstatic because again, this is a man who would be willing to allow you to have economic harm so that his personal feelings will be better. Let's never forget that. We shouldn't forget that. These are important things. They're important. And it's just aggravating. It's insulting. It's, it, it's, I, I don't even have the words for it because it's so infuriating. But... There are many things that we're talking about here, and we're going to go on in a moment in the show. I want to uh, also address, because we're not done, show's still, we still got another, oh, half an hour or so. We're going to take a quick break because my mouth is dry. <laughs> uh, but uh, we want to talk about Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio has joined the race for the 2020 Democratic nomination. He makes, I think, 23 or 24 in terms of the number of candidates that are known at this moment. There's some 33 or 34 or 35 that are at some level in the race vying for the Democratic opinion. And Bill de Blasio is now in there with his 76% disapproval from New York City. People who think that it's a joke for Bill de Blasio to be in the race, even though he's the mayor of New York, even though he thinks he has a chance, does anyone else? And more importantly, what kind of baggage is he bringing with him? Is this a smart idea? Are there any Democrats or any conservatives, independents, libertarians, anybody who thinks that Bill de Blasio is the answer to try and take on Trump, or more importantly, to represent the Democratic Party, the socialist movement of the Democratic Party as defined by the Democratic National Committee under Tom Perez. The movement towards Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Democratic Socialism headed by Bernie Sanders. Let's take a quick break and then we'll answer that question because I think it's a really interesting question. So we'll be right back in just a moment. 